French President Emmanuel Macron has inducted the American-born, pioneering performer and civil rights icon Josephine Baker into the Pantheon, considered France's highest tribute. She's the first black woman, first American, to receive the honor. Josephine Baker was born in St. Louis in 1906. As an 11-year-old, she witnessed racial violence firsthand when white mobs attacked East St. Louis, Illinois, killing as many as 150 black residents. At the age of 19, she moved to France to escape racism at home. Soon she became a superstar on stage and screen. In 1951, she returned to the U.S. on tour, refused to play for segregated audiences, was later banned from re-entering the United States for a decade after being accused of having ties to the Communist Party. In 1963, she flew in from Paris to speak at the March on Washington, the only woman. Josephine Baker died in 1975, but her legacy lives on. The induction ceremony for Josephine Baker comes at a time when racism is on the rise in France. Earlier this week, the far-right xenophobic writer and pundit Eric Zemmour announced he would run for president in April's election. He's been described as, quote, the most extreme voice of French racism today. Zemmour had repeatedly attacked Islam, immigrants and the left. He's been charged numerous times with inciting racism racial hatred, including after he called unaccompanied child migrants thieves, killers and rapists. Some analysts have described him as the French Donald Trump. We go now to France, where we're joined by French journalist and filmmaker Rokaya Diallo. Her latest op-ed for The Washington Post is headlined, Josephine Baker enters the Pantheon. Don't let it distract from this larger story. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, Rokaya. Why don't you start off by telling us that larger your story and then go into the significance of Josephine Baker being recognized. Yes, so thank you so much for inviting me. I'm very happy. Uh, to me, it's a very good news to finally have a woman of color in the Pantheon, uh, which is like, as you said, the highest, like one of the most prestigious place to welcome the the. Um, the, the, the most um, revered uh, French uh, figures. So it's something that is very meaningful because she, uh, as, um, as, as well as being an entertainer, and she was also uh, a, a hero um, uh, resisting during the Second World War, but also took part to uh, the march on Washington. As you said, she was the first, uh, the, only, the only woman. But... Um, the thing is that there, there are two things that, that uh, left me with uh, mixed feelings. Uh, first, the fact that um, France and, uh, tends to use the fact that it has been very welcoming to African-Americans throughout the 20th century uh, to picture itself as a very open and welcoming country. But the thing that we tend to forget is that uh, while Josephine Baker was celebrated and dancing on Parisian stages, uh, France was a very violent colonial power. So it was also colonizing Africa and Asia and also the Caribbean. And um, perpetrating very, very much violence uh, to people who were colonized and also um, displaying them in what they, what was called uh, at that time the colonial exhibitions, which were basically human zoos where you could see people coming from the colony to be seen by uh, visitors uh, from Paris and from other regions of France. So there, there was a double standard with uh, African-American be, be, being welcomed because they were American and didn't have any historic uh, historical agreement uh, to settle with France and at the same time other people of color who were uh, actually uh, submit, su submitted to uh, the French uh, the French state and okay, if you could uh, uh, elaborate on that a bit I'd just like to read a short short quotation from uh, uh, the acclaimed writer James Baldwin who was of course, one of the most prominent African-Americans to seek uh, a refuge in France. He wrote uh, about precisely this issue in an interview, he said in 1983, in France, I am a black American posing no conceivable threat to French identity. In effect, I do not exist in France. I might have a very different tale to tell were I from Senegal and a very bitter song to sing were I from Algeria. Rukaya Diallo, your, your comments. Yes, it's very interesting because it's still the same today. If you are a black person from the US, you're mostly seen as American. And the identity, the American identity is very prestigious and it has nothing to do with the French colonialism. So you don't really um, 
take part to that sense of guilt or to that uh, confrontational relationship that you may have had with friends because your ancestors were not the victims of the French racism. So you're seen as, some, um, as someone who doesn't have to do with the, the, the national context. And you even benefit from the fact that you have now, today, many uh, African Americans who are very famous. So you have that very positive uh, uh, image. And actually, that's just, I feel the same way when I go to the US because I'm French and I'm seen as a French person. So as an, uh, when people understand that I'm not African American, I'm suddenly seen as someone that is uh, connected to a country that is very prestigious, that has to do with fashion, with the art de vivre, and such and so. And I, I, I don't, I no longer have to deal with all the racial issues that are really connected to the, the African American identity. And James Baldwin is always used in the French public discourse as an example of. France not being as uh, racist as the U.S., which is to me not true, but that tells a lot about how that myth that is very uh, vivid also in the U.S. context of the French being open-minded is still alive, which is not the case because, you know, I was born and raised in France, but my parents were born in Senegal. And they were born with the indigenous status, which was a, a status that was less than the status of citizen. So at the time, when Josephine Baker was celebrated, my own ancestors, my grandparents, my you know great grandparents, did not have the same opportunities. So if she was a black woman from Africa or from Guadeloupe or from or from Martinique, she wouldn't have had the same opportunities. And I think it's important to say that. I think we need to celebrate the fact that she's finally recognized, but that should not erase the fact that at the same time, France was not open to minorities. And it was very violent and it really took part to wars to uh, prevent those people from gaining their freedom and from standing, standing for their own uh, humanity. Rukai, I explain also, you said that these issues persist today. How does this kind of, of racism manifest itself broadly within French society, but also specifically with respect to its immigration policies? You just mentioned the fact that uh, Eric Zemmour, uh, the pundit, the former pundit who is now uh, running for presidency, was uh, made his fame on racist uh, statements and also sexist statements. Uh, his um, obsessions are mostly uh, directed toward immigration and Islam. When he um, said uh, publicly, officially, that he would run for presidency, was invited to a TV show, and he said that it doesn't make any difference um, between Islam and Islamism, so extremism. And he said that, according to him, Muslims from France should um, just, um, how, how, how do you say that in English? Uh, they, sh they, they should not be Muslim anymore. They should, they should um, drop their religion, actually. So that means that, uh, you know, you can say that publicly and run for, uh, you know, presidency and having many people decided to vote for you. So to me, it's, and at the same time, uh, uh, his um, stance is very aggressive toward immigration. And there is also uh, in the government of uh, Emmanuel Macron, there is, a, I can say, a very um, open anti-immigrant uh, discourse. They voted a law against immigration uh, three years ago, which one, which was one of the worst laws since the Second World War. So, you know, celebrating uh, Josephine Baker, who was an immigrant who decided to to leave her country because she um, she wanted to 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 live a better life elsewhere, is uh, while making things difficult for immigrants of today to access to France is a contradiction to me because you you know maybe you me, maybe today emmanuel macron is preventing the future josephine bakers from coming to france because the barriers to come here are higher and higher so there is a kind of ambivalence uh, uh because while celebrating josephine baker um who was a, a, a celebrity uh, during the last century. Today, uh, racism is still alive. It's still expressing, expressing itself against immigrants, but also against all people of color, of color. for example, in police brutality, in police, uh, the, 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 we have statistics that, that says that if you are seen as a black man or an Arab man, you are 20 times more likely to be, to be checked 
um, you know, randomly in the streets by the police than if you belong to any other category. So that means that uh, you have that experience of a person of color in France facing uh, systemic racism, facing, facing institutional racism, and at the same time, a president that celebrates a woman of color who stood against racism, but she stood against racism in the U.S. She never actually uh, said anything against colonization or against racism in France because the, la the life that she had in France made her be grateful. And I understand why she was grateful, but it's very convenient to celebrate someone that has nothing to say against France. Urkaya Diallo, um, in talking about uh, Eric Zemmour and what kind of uh, threat he represents, can you talk about the role of the media? I mean, hasn't he been tried and convicted for hate speech several times, and what does that mean? It's funny that you ask the question, because uh, the first time he was convicted for hate speech, it was uh, because of the a debate we had, um, you know, he was facing me. So, um, he's, to me, um, Eric Zemmour has been created by the media. He's been, like, his first book, his, uh, not his first book, but the, 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 his first, his, the first book that made him mainstream was a very violent book against women, against feminism, against the fact that women are gain, gaining more and more space, more and more rights. And then uh, he was, um, he became a pundit on the public television. It was not even a private television. And he stayed in, and even have, have, after being convicted, he remained public. He remained on the public television and then on other private uh, media. So to me, there is a much complicity from the media because they knew who he was. They knew that they, they were they were more interested by the buzz, by the noise around his statements, by um, than by the fact of being fair and not perpetrating, not uh, not echoing hate hate speeches. So. Actually, to me, there is much complicity to and to all the people that gave him a mic that ampli who amplified his voice, uh, because they gave him the platform to make him able running for presidency and just uh, polluting uh, the atmosphere with like hate speech, with racist statements, with sexist statements, and harassing basically people of color by constantly. Um, Aggress uh, having aggressive words against them. Rukaya, could you explain what you think uh, his actual prospects are uh, as a presidential candidate? And just to give very quickly uh, some of the statements that you say have been amplified. He's approved of people comparing Islam with Nazism, said that parents should only give their children traditional French names advanced the great replacement theory and said that political power should be with men and not women whose role it is to have and raise children. Yes, he said that actually women are unable to be geniuses and to be politicians because to him they don't have like that that ability to. to. And he said that without consequence. He also uh, just lately he was facing a woman, a Muslim woman with a hijab, with a headscarf in the street, and he asked her to remove her headscarf in order to be truly French. And I remember he, he told me uh, during the same debate that my 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 first name Rokaya wasn't truly French and my that my parents should have named me differently to make me French -er, Frencher. So that's that's and it you know it, that was so offensive, that was so aggressive and I, I don't understand why people didn't challenge him more directly. And and, and now he's he's um, he's just um, we have know, ten just, seconds. He's just saying whatever he whatever he wants without facing um, real criticize and deep criticize and I think that we have that will be difficult because is 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 more provocative than uh, Marine Le Pen, who is the head the head of the of the current uh, far right, the the National Rally.